Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Gemstone Legends video and in this video I want to go through the latest patch notes of the update because there's some really awesome stuff in here. Um, things that were added based on player suggestions, good quality of life improvements, um, and overall a lot of things that I'm really happy about that have um, just made it so much easier to do the things that you want to do in the game. So um, if you're not currently playing, Check this game out. It's pretty awesome. The developers actually respond to player requests. There's a lot more alignment with what the community wants to see and what actually happens. Um, you know, like any game, they still have their own direction to some degree, but there's this connection between developers and players that I have not seen before, especially coming from Empires and Puzzles, which feels often like the opposite. Um, so links in the description so you can start. If you download with those links, you'll get a free $50 starter bonus that you won't be able to get otherwise. So don't download from the App Store, download from those links and get your free bonus and come see why so many of us are playing this game now. All right, so let's get into it. I have looked through this briefly, but I don't have this like scripted out or anything. So we're just going to read through and um, I'll give you my feedback as we're going. But there's a lot of good changes that I've seen so far. So you can see the bolded text here. Speed tickets are a big change that they have added. Um, this is another thing that makes Gemstone Prime such a great value. You can now do uh, 50 battles in seconds, basically. They simulate. Uh, you still have to have a good enough team to beat the level, and you have to have beat it on three stars, which in the Rift means that you've done it in under 20 turns. Um, I was a little worried about whether I'd be able to do that, and I beat it in you know 12 turns without much difficulty. So if you've got a strong Rift team, you should have no problem. Um, and so just much easier to meet your daily quest stuff much faster to get equipment and um there's something in here too about unlimited uh farming but doing it in smaller increments so we used to have you know multi battles you had 65 you'd queue it up it would take you a couple hours in the rifts maybe depending on your team and so now they have these speed tickets and it's instantaneous but you have to meet certain criteria to be able to do that but that's a change that i think is hugely positive uh stars in the rift i kind of got to that but or briefly talked about it but we'll come back to it reworks to the star system and multi battles raid boss swipe this is really awesome uh gemstone prime upgrade just in increasing the value diamond scroll is amazing so we'll get to that as well um uh, battle events tournaments guild wars long way to changes much more okay so speed tickets are the main thing um they were mentioned in the dev diary okay so speed tickets allow you to simulate a fight much quicker, as I mentioned. Um, yeah, you can you can batch them out. It looks like it was limiting me to 15 today, even though I had 50 of the tickets. So not really much of a, an issue. And you can see on the top of uh, this screen here, one star win the battle, two stars less than 40 turns, three stars less than 20. So with a strong enough team, it's not too hard to do that. Um, and check out my videos on how to succeed in the Phoenix and Goliath rifts because I talk about the the kind of team you should be building. So if, you, if this is, if you're having trouble with that, check those videos out. I basically have already made a video on how to succeed in every aspect of the game. So uh, just go through my Gemstone Legends playlist, find the thing you need and you'll be all good to go. Um, yep, you can purchase these as well if you want. Um, I won't be doing that probably, but um, you know, we'll see. It just makes this farming aspect so convenient and very generous with gemstone prime to get 50 per day because the cost of that is like equivalent to the path of valor in empires and puzzles and maybe you get 33 tickets across the full one month this gives you 50 per day uh which is pretty amazing um because what is that 1500 per month which even if you buy loot tickets in Empires and Puzzles, you're maybe getting like 250, 300, something like that. So this is way better in my opinion. Um, and you can see the simulation here, victory, defeat. It usually takes like two seconds to decide. If you have a strong enough team, I have not seen a single defeat for myself yet, and I've done this like a hundred or so times. Um, you'll still see the summary here. Yep. Okay, uh, da, 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 each player. so you get 15 if you um, 
add gemstone prime you'll get 35 more on top of that the current multi battle daily limit will be removed every player in the game will be able to do an infinite number of multi battles per day with a maximum of 10 at once so before you could queue up 65 if you had gemstone prime it would do them all and then you got the summary and then you had to do them one by one or you had to wait until the next day now you can do it infinitely but you can only do 10 at a time so that does mean you have to check in after those 10 maybe clear out some equipment inventory depending on how full your um your inventory is update on that as well as part of this patch uh, but now you can do it infinitely so this is a benefit to the player i believe um it makes it a lot easier to finish the events where farming is necessary you don't have to do them one by one you can do them 10 at a time now infinitely after using your speed tickets um and to use it you'll have to get three stars on that level which again is not hard to do okay rifts are going to have reward systems unlocking 2040 okay so same thing as going through the campaign where you had to get if you get three stars on every level you get a certain type of reward um, and those rewards are quite good on the hardest difficulty, which I think is like Inferno, which comes after Hell, I believe. Um, now Rifts are the same thing. So you want to go through and, and beat those in the you know proper number of turns, which again is really not that hard, um, especially on the earlier levels. Okay, so yeah, instead of having to use only a couple heroes to do it, it's just turns. So if you've got a powerful team, you're going you're gonna to plow right through it. Um, they added a turn indicator to every screen that I've seen so far. War attacks, arena attacks, um, campaign stuff, which is just kind of nice to see. That way you can know when the crowd wants more blood thing is, is going to, to start. Um, so getting 60 stars in one of the rifts will grant 50 platinum scroll shards. That means 450 scroll shards total from all the rifts, which is pretty cool. That gives you four and a half platinum scrolls, basically, um, which are the highest chance for legendary heroes. So more free stuff just for playing the game. Um, it can be kind of tedious. Uh, however, these rewards are far better than you would get in, you know, Empires and Puzzles. Okay, so, and this is the kind of stuff that's like, oh, that's so great. They're just giving you the player. I mean, you have to work for it, sure, but that's to be expected. But you get this free stuff. Um... So yeah, that's awesome. And next is the raid boss swipe. So one of the more time-consuming aspects of this game has been doing the raid boss attacks. Uh, they're not timed, which is nice because you can take your time and you're not rushing frantically like you are in Empires and Puzzles, but they could take longer. So what they've done now is they've created this swipe system, which it sounds like was a community request let's let me just skim this real quick so yeah they want them to be challenging but they don't want them to be super time consuming so that is trying to give time back to the player instead of suck more time away which is great so how this works is you fight once use all your potions do all the stuff you want to do and then you have the choice of just mimicking that same attack again. So say you get a million damage on one hit, you used X number of potions. Now you can repeat that again. It's going to cost you some gems and the potions slash apples that you would normally need. Um, so basically, it's only going to cost you what it normally would have to get that same attack, except a few gems on top of that. And then you just get to mimic that hit. So you do one really good hit, and then you just get to copy it, and you're in and out much quicker than you would normally be, which is pretty awesome. Um, and if you're out, you can purchase the stuff that you would need again right away. So I see this as a win. You don't have to do this. They've made it an option. So if you prefer to save the gems or just approach this differently, you absolutely can do that. This is just another option on top of things. Uh, to speed things up, which I think is really nice. And these are just some screens that show what that would look like. All right, Battle Pass adjustments. Battle Pass dust rewards amount have been adjusted to fit the Awakening changes, so now you get more dust um, from completing those things because they made the levels cost more dust. So just making the Battle Pass 
items keep up with the kind of inflation of that one update they did where it, it cost more dust, but then you also get more dust from the rift. So they just kind of changed that mechanic. Um, so they've adjusted that to, to align, uh, gemstone prime upgrades. So making this an even better value, which I think it was already a fantastic value and now it's even better. Um, we've decided to take another look at gemstone prime. What we've seen is the opportunity to improve the experience so what it offered before was plus 20% hero XP from battles, plus 20% gold coins, plus 20% energy regeneration, plus 50 multi-battles. What's changed? Um, the daily limit is removed. And instead you get a plus 10 max limit of multi-battles. So we saw before it's limited to 10. If you have prime, you can do 15 at a time in addition to having your extra... Um, speed tickets and some other really good stuff so we'll we'll keep moving through um so now you can do 15 at a time with infinite repeats what stays the same is the xp gold coins energy regeneration what's new increased max energy regeneration so that's just more free energy every day um plus 300 artifact inventory slots which is really helpful um it would be nice to see this just for everyone across the game not sure what the justification is here but since I think Gemstone Prime is already great value, I'm happy to have it. And um, this is just a huge bonus in doing that because now you have uh, 900 spots, which is what you really need based on, at least in my opinion, based on the all the different number of uh, possible artifact sets that there are. You want to keep pieces in each set, you know. So I've, I've uh, done a video in the past about how to work your artifact inventory, what to keep, what to get rid of. I truly think you should be harsh about this in terms of what you keep and what you get rid of because you just will get better stuff every day. Um, so there's a video on that. So go check that out in the same Gemstone Legends playlist if that is something that you're having a hard time with. I think what I offer makes it easier. All right, increase speed tickets up from 50, up to 50 from 15. Awesome. Um, so... Jimson Prime will allow you to regenerate more energy, provide you with additional artifact, artifact inventory space, 50 speed tickets, um, so 350 speed fights a week on top of a limited access to multi-battle with 15 at a time instead of 10, so 50% more. Um, yeah, awesome. Diamond Scroll, this thing is super cool. They did not need to add this by any means, but I think they're trying to... I get the impression they want the ex the player experience to be as good as possible. And that is not true for all these kinds of games. So I really appreciate that this is a priority for them and that they would add such a high value item like this. We don't know exactly how it's going to be available yet, whether you earn shards, but when I tell you what this thing can do, it's really fantastic. So in response to community suggestions, this is a player or, you know, people voted on this and they implemented it based on that, which is so cool to see. We've decided to introduce a new type of scroll, the Diamond Scroll. This extremely rare scroll will be available in the game on special occasions and players will have a chance to collect Diamond Scroll shards from events and other sources. Um, so this is going to take a while to accumulate probably, but it should once you see what it's able to do because the value is unmistakable there. Uh, what makes it special? The Diamond Scroll will guarantee a legendary hero. On top of that, the scroll will guarantee that the summoned legendary hero will not be a duplicate of any the player already has. So you're guaranteed to get a legendary and something that's new to you. That's awesome. They could have done a 50-50 legendary epic chance. They did 100%. And on top of that, that it won't be a duplicate. So I see that as very generous. Um, again, we'll see how quickly you accumulate this. I imagine if... Platinum shards are typically seen in, you know, increments of 5 or 10, that this will probably be 1, 2, and 5 or something like that. So it will take some time, but the value here is really good. Um, so, um, while we know that some players love surprises, part of our community expressed that may also be fun to have a clear goal and path to achieving it. Uh, this is our way to surprise you by getting rid of randomness. So you can see how to earn it, which is awesome. 
Uh, new events. Some players, have, ha, some of our player suggestions were pointing toward the in-game events. While we believe the classic event may fit well in the rhythm of personal development, the small mix-up from month to month may not be enough of an event for some of the more experienced players. You made it clear that you're seeking some additional challenges, so trying to give more experienced players something to keep them um, interested. Uh, we'll bring your whole roster to the table. Oh yeah, we're getting um, like raid tournaments, basically, uh, as one of the things. That's something that's in Empires and Puzzles. Uh, let's see. Events for Epic Hero will no longer occur monthly. They will occur every two months. Daily point events will be removed from the calendar. Don't worry, Epic Tomes will be available in the rest of the classic events. Classic events will be shortened by one day to make room for something completely new. Chain events and battle events. So first, chain events. Instead of a classic two-week ev event for an Epic Hero every month, players will have the opportunity to participate in the chain event every two months. It will contain three separate events that will interfere with each other, Progress from the first will help you gather points in the second, and that will help you get um, points in the final event. It won't be required to finish all to gain the reward. However, the more that you manage to complete, the more, uh, the more and the better the rewards you'll get overall. So these might be related to the diamond shards. A small sample of what chain events may look like. Oh yeah, so you get these heroes in one event and you use them to gather points in the next event. So it is more interesting. You do have to develop some of these heroes to do better. And overall, it's just um, more of a more of an interesting challenge than just the basic events of like, do this, do this, do this, you know, open a chest three times, use three dummies, that kind of stuff that's less exciting. All right, battle events. This special type of, of event will take place outside Rift's campaign arena and raid bosses. They will vary from event to event, giving players options to test their strengths and exploit their weaknesses. Use of a specific faction? Yeah, why not? Use the warriors only? Sure, bring it on. So it'll, it'll be more selective on the angles of your roster, um, which will... I think ultimately be an interesting thing. I see these all as positive changes. We don't know what it'll look like yet, but it is trying to keep the game interesting, and I think that's always a positive. Um, all right, so that's a thing. Tournaments. Tournaments will create groups of players divided by their strength and allow participants to compete with uh, each other. So this gives another PvP aspect to the game over top of Guild Wars and Arena. Uh, in contrast to current global events, the tournaments will be held in smaller groups, allowing even beginner players to participate and face opponents at a similar level. So that's really important. These are not just going to be events dominated by better people, but they'll group people up based on their level, and that's who you'll be competing with um, in your weight class, so to speak, which is only fair. Each of the tournaments will provide rewards and glory. Um, so Guild Wars, they have, based on... Um, Community feedback have allowed individual people to sign off. So instead of deciding at a guild level, whether you're in or out, you can decide on an individual level and you can change this from time to time. And I think that will factor into the matchmaking system so that if you have five people in your guild of 30 who don't want to do wars, you're not matched with another group of 30 where everyone's invested and it's harder to compete. Um, so yeah, that's a thing. Another... Uh, suggestion implemented the history. It will allow players to select the desired date and display the performance summary from previous Guild Wars even a few weeks back. So a bit more data. Um, so this is another change. I think in response to some of the more dominant alliances that found a way to just use their same really good teams over and over, they are now making those heroes get tired so that you are not able to just use a small subset of your teams to be dominant. This is making it a bit more realistic where if you're using the same heroes over and over and over, you know, in real life they would get more tired and less effective and that's what's going to happen. So uh, this was a player suggestion. During Guild Wars, there was no limit to the number of times players could use their teams in defense. This will not change. However, each time you reuse your teams, they'll become more and more exhausted. The exhaust will influence 
the team's attack, defense, and speed, lowering them with each consecutive use more and more significantly. Maximum is exhaust level three, and then it won't grow anymore. You can see this upside down arrow next to the uh, power of the team. It's in Polish here, <laughs> but um, that little upside down arrow, there's a yellow, orange, and red, one, two, and three. That's the exhaust level. Here's those again, and it's significant. So first, it's pretty minor. Then it jumps up five times, and then it goes almost double after that. So um, hopefully this will bring more balance. I don't see this as a penalty so much as trying to um, keep people from exploiting things they were able to exploit before. All right, quality of life stuff, which is always good. Adding battle numbers, the campaigns, you can see what order they go in now before you weren't really sure. So that's a, a minor thing, but it's still nice. A login button. Um, you can pause and read these things more if you want. Um, improvements and bug fixes. I'm just going to pause on this here and let you guys look at it. I'll skim through real quick and see if there's anything I want to mention. But it's all minor stuff just to make the game more stable and easier to navigate throughout. Um, one thing that's kind of cool. Created a welcome back gift for returning players. So if you take a break for a while... Um, and you decide that you want to come back because you enjoy playing the game or you miss people in your guild or something like that, um, you'll get a gift for coming back, which is not needed and uh, very welcomed. So yeah, let me know what you think of these changes in the comments below. I personally don't see anything at all that I think is negative. I think these were all things of trying to make the game better, and that is just incredibly refreshing. Um... Yeah, so I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Again, if you've been checking this out, you're interested in playing, download links in the description. That'll give you a free bonus. And there isn't, there has never been a better time to start because um, the game just keeps getting better and better. So there's, there's this new patch now, which I think improved a lot of things. Um, quality of life and just overall ease of use and things to allow the game to be more fun by removing some things that were more of a barrier or more of a grind. And so this is, to me, a really positive indication of the direction the game is going in. And I'm, I kind of look forward to the updates, whereas in Empires and Puzzles, I'm like, oh god, what are they doing now? You know, oh, they nerfed a bunch of heroes. Okay, yeah, maybe they buffed a couple really old heroes. Um, but I don't, I've never felt excited as far as I can remember for an Empires and Puzzles update. I'm always interested to read it, but this is just a bunch of cool stuff. So anyways, um, share your thoughts in the comments down below. Please hit that like button and subscribe. Two easy clicks that are just going to help you support the channel and make the video easier to find for other people that are looking for this information. So I really appreciate that support. Um, I think it's easy to do. I, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube as well. So I try to think about these things also to support the channels that I appreciate, uh, because these things do matter in the era of the algorithm. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.